Hello there. Thank you for joining us. This is Hector from PoliticalScams.me, and I'm reporting right from Tamiyu, and it's windy, it's cloudy, and of course, you haven't heard from me for a very long time. I haven't updated a podcast. I haven't updated many things on the website, and in fact, I've gone through some great personal troubles, and I'm kind of dealing with some depression, so it is very difficult to really approach the truth when you yourself have to do a lot of work. Anywho... If you have kept up with me on Facebook, you recently have seen me in Ferguson, Missouri, reporting on the situation there. And this podcast will cover some of that, but it has more positive news to bring to you. One of them being is that if you listen to me, you know that politics is a scam. It's something that is inherent in this podcast title, Political Scams. But... We want to bring the content wider, grow outside of that little label of politics. While some are competing for power locally and deciding on what to do and how to act against the patrones here in Laredo, I believe it is more important to see what we can do at an individual level in our personal development. And I think that is what I want for this podcast to teach, if anything, to do your own personal homework, to you to do your own personal homework so that, so that you're more apt to fight the New World Order. My belief is that the New World Order is a hallucination that is fed by our own human nature. Why do we fight? Do we need to survive? Is there a real good reason that we need to fight the political oppressors when we are the ones that are the most authoritarian to our loved ones, to our friends, to anyone? Society is decaying and that's the real problem that keeps us in this perpetual cycle of violence because we don't care for each other and even more we don't care for ourselves so in this age of degeneration and decadence it is important to stay to take a stance to take a real strong stance against everything that is anti-human and one of those things being anti-human is politics but when my time happened to be when I came across and decided to step away from the political game something always brings me back and it is the distractions that is in America there are so many things happening right now that it has been memory hole nobody's talking about Benghazi nobody's talking about Fast and Furious and to those few small individuals who keep talking and drumming this fact that the corrupt oligarchs are controlling Obama and many like him are being forgotten, they're being called racist, they're being called nut jobs, they're, be, they're, they're being called conspiracy theorists. And those labels are no longer constricting them anymore. All those conspiracy theorists that we've talked in the previous episodes, they have become true to some extent. Ultimately, what is going to come to our neighborhood is what happened in Ferguson, Missouri. Because Ferguson, Missouri is not an isolated event. When I was there, People saw it as structural violence, as institutional racism, as a black versus white issue. And it truly is not anything like that. The police state will use any demographic as a minority and use that and use and use an excuse to demonize that minority. And then once we are all very excited to demonize one particular minority, the state does a 180 and turns the authoritative oppressive forms against us. So whatever we end up advocating in government, so for example, when we advocate for the war on drugs or the war on terrorism, it comes back to haunt haunt us. That is something that we call karma. Whatever you put out there will come back to you. It's pretty simple of common sense, but the American citizen has forgotten that. And it's that point where we're realizing we're not all that important to the state. They're abusing our rights left and right. And that is why I think it is more important to take a direct action against the state, which is powered by our own actions, by our own voluntary actions. The state is not powered by a magical fairy or a, or a deity. It is powered by our own volunteerism. We power it. And we can withdraw our consent if we so choose to. But some people believe that the government will only be battled with guns and violence and i don't never i have never advocated for the death of cops i've never advocated for overthrowing the government with weapons it it can't be done because that will only beget more violence and 
really what is keeping this power elite in control is violence. What keeps violence so in abundance? It's ignorance. People don't have the capability to be aware that whatever actions that you take upon somebody else more than likely will return to you. And I want to just finish off my point and put it in a nice way that doesn't seem like I'm crazy. I think that the best way to live free in this totalitarian state is to have a personal approach to life and be direct and not fall into follies such as government policies and legislation and petition since I think those are somewhat effective in country on um, rolling back policies but personally I feel like that's a waste of time I feel it's a waste of time to go to protest and go out with signs and yell and holler because eventually that becomes mob psychology and from what I saw in Ferguson Missouri is that people were more willing to sell their propaganda than really talk to each other one of the main problems there is that the community lacked leaders they did not have vocal outspoken representatives that were from that community there were people from New York the revolutionary communists came and riled up the mob and talked about all these police state based on right um, they talked about the police state powered by racism but if you take a real frank look at it my view is that the police state is powered by the currency by the fiat baseless money the government cannot grow unless it manipulates the money it how or why is this important to protest and demonstrations and the police well what has stolen our economic prosperity one of the main reasons people were protesting or pissed off in general in st louis missouri is that there was the lack of job availability there was no social mobility upward mobility people were not people were underemployed they had to work harder for less and they haven't asked the question why is that why is my money worth less well it's the currency the oligarchs, the ruling elite, those who control the majority of the financial assets in America and have most of the wealth, get the money first through the Federal Reserve special money lending window that has 0% interest, unlike you, who has to pay interest up the wazoo, but those who really buy the candidates, who buy the politicians, such as, such as Obama, get the free ride, get the free monop monopoly money. When they get the money, they spend it on luxury items and inflate the currency. And when it dwindles down to you, you have a 95% less value in your dollar. And this doesn't happen overnight. And if it did, people will actually wake up to that. But it happens through years, slowly and slowly and slowly. And in that sense, the government uses, or those who control the government, use our own nature against us. We adapt. To our conditioning we adapt to our environment we're slowly adapting to the authoritative nature of government since it is so corrupt that it gets away with tremendous unconstitutional laws and tremendous crimes that people just look to to their left and their right and have no clue where they are because it basically is the twilight zone richard nixon got impeached for basically wiretapping his political enemies. And that has been part of politics. Wiretapping, suspicion, paranoia. Politics is inherently like that. People playing the game, that's what they do. But now we have the NSA apparatus that makes it even more dangerous to play the game. Because now they have our financial data, they have everything, everything about our history that they can use to manipulate us against our own best interests and it's readily available information that we give to them because we thought that this is a free service and there's nothing wrong from it. That's how they operate, through a front. They think that you are getting something in reward when you're voting for Obamacare, but no, that's the scam. It's the honeypot trap. They want you to think that there is something in return for you. There's nothing in government for you anymore. America is completely done for. The idea of a Republican government is gone that we say that we are a democratic nation is basically bullshit. It's basically bullshit in the sense that there is no form of democracy. And if, like Mark Twain said, and if voting actually mattered, 
you wouldn't be allowed to do it. We're only allowed to do things that are unimportant and have no effect. And that's how they want to keep us. And I'm really not going to play that game anymore. That game is irrelevant, the game of politics. I am not going to play that game. And in this podcast, I implore you to do the things, actions, actions that are outside of politics that can affect society. And one of the services that we're thinking and committing ourselves to bring into our local community, because it's about leaders taking action and providing the services that we need to improve our society. That's what this is all about. It's cop watch. It's accountability in law enforcement. Going to the streets and talking to people and talking back and forth, listening to their ideas. Filming cops so that they don't abuse their authority. And also for their own accountability. We don't know what's really happening in the street, but it is up to us to discover and talk to you. Thank you. And I really appreciate your time. I really would like to communicate everything that is personally affecting me, but there's been some couple of troubling times and I've taken some time off the political scam project just to discuss some things with myself and work on them. That is one of the reasons I've been inactive but my passion for the truth hasn't stopped and it will continue on further on until as much as I can really. That is why I need your support more than ever. I need your support and I need your criticism. I need to know how I can improve and how I can report better on the issues that you want to know about. Some of the times I think I spend more time ranting and frustrating myself with my own words than really broadcasting the truth. So one of those things that I wish to improve is breaking down the truth and breaking down the analysis that is of the utmost importance. So please keep following us, please keep sharing our stuff, and if anything, we really would like for you to donate. But if not, your time and attention is the best we can have. Your time and attention is all we need, but monetary support is also great. So if you could, please donate Bitcoin. And if you're still with fiat currency, we also accept dollars. Have a very wonderful evening. See you later.